In a previous video, we looked at how you valued a stock using the constant growth dividend formula. And the formula is listed right up here. The price of the stock today is equal to the dividend one period into the future divided by the return that shareholders require minus the growth rate of dividends. The question is, how do we figure out the growth rate of dividends? Now, down here I have a bunch of different dividends, and let's figure out how we would figure out the growth rate. There are a couple of ways to do it, and let's look at the first. One way to do it is to look at the, um, the rate of change from period to period, and then we'll just take an average. So the rate of change between a dollar and a dollar five is actually quite easy. You can probably just look at it and figure out that it's a dollar five, but the formula would be the dividend in 2008 minus the dividend in 2007 divided by the dividend in 2007. So formula-wise, uh, the rate would be equal to, let's say, the rate in time period t equals the dividend in time period t minus the dividend in time period t minus 1 divided by the dividend in time period t minus 1. So the rate of change between 2007 and 2008 would be a dollar five minus a dollar over a dollar. And if you work that out, that's going to be five cents over a dollar. That's going to be 0 0.05 or 5%. And we could do the next one. The next one is a dollar twelve minus a dollar five all over a dollar five. And if we work that out, we get one point uh, one point one two. minus 1.05 divided by 1.05. So that's going to equal 0 0.0667 or 6 6.67 percent. All right, I've actually created a spreadsheet. It's a little easier to do this in Excel. Same numbers here and we can put the formula in. So we can put in the rate of change. And down here, let's put a formula in. So we're going to, going to say equals what's in cell B5 minus what's in cell B4 divided by what's in B4. And we get 5%. And then we can just copy the formula down. If we copy it down one period, you can see that it knows to go from to B6 minus B5 divided by B5, and we can copy it all the way down. So we get these different rates of change, these different percentage changes from period to period, and we can just take an average of them. So we could just add these up and divide by 5. In Excel, that's quite easy. We can go over to the, uh, the functions here, and it says auto sum. If I hit that, it'll just add them up, and I could divide by five, or I can hit the drop down menu, and one of the choices is average, and it's just going to average these five numbers. So I'm going to hit enter, and we get 6.97%. So if you were doing a calculation, you might use 7% as your growth rate. Is that exact? No. If you think dividends are going to keep increasing, then you might want to use a higher number, but that's one possibility is take an average of these numbers. Okay, so that's one way to do it. So after we've averaged it out, and this is an arithmetic average, we get uh, six point. We get six point nine seven percent. There's another way to do it. Instead of looking at all of these numbers, let's treat this as a present value and this is a future value and ask ourselves what rate will take one dollar to a dollar forty 
one, two, three, four, five years from now. So we could do this, right? We've done this before. The future value equals the present value times one plus the interest rate raised to the teeth power. All right, in this case, we know FV, we know PV, we want to solve for R, and we know T. So we could rearrange these terms, and I have a tutorial that does that, so I won't uh, show you the whole derivation here. But you would get R equals FV divided by PV. raised to the 1 over t power minus 1. All right, if we substitute in the numbers we have, let's see what we get. We're going to have a dollar 40 is our future value, a dollar is our present value, t is 5, so we're going to raise it to the 1 fifth power minus 1. And let's see what we get. We take a dollar 40, we divide it by 1, so it's still $1.40. We raise it to the 0.2 power. 1 over 5 is 0.2. And then we subtract 1 from it. So we get essentially the same answer we got before. 0 0.0696 or 6.96%. 6 and if you want to just use your financial calculator, easy way to do it. We can use our time value of money functions here. Okay, make sure you clear it. Second, clear TVM. N is 5. We don't know the interest rate. The present value is a dollar. Make sure that's negative. We have to have different signs between present and future value. The future value is a dollar forty. And then just compute the interest rate, and again, we get 6.96%. So if you have a problem where you're supposed to calculate the price of the stock, you may be given a stream of dividends, you may be given a, a rate of return, and a growth, but not the growth rate. Okay, so let's say we want to define the price of the stock in 2000 and uh, well, let's say 2012. We don't know what the price of the stock is. Now we have a growth rate of dividends. So let's say price in 2012. We know the dividend in 2012 is $1.40, but we're going to assume that it grows at a 7% growth rate. We need the dividend one year into the future, and we need a rate of return. So let's assume that the return, the required return is 15%. So we're going to have 0.15 minus 0.07 and let's see what we get. So the dividend next year will be $1.40 times 1.07. Okay, so it's $1.49.8 or roughly $1.50 divided by 0.15 minus 0.07, which is 0.08. And we're going to get 18.72, so we could maybe round up to uh, 18.73 cents. $18.73. And so that's it. So if you're given a stream of dividends and you want to figure out the growth rate, there's a couple of ways to do it. Figure out the rate of change from each period and then take an average or you can simply look at how much what what uh, interest rate will take the first dividend to the last dividend so in this case in five years this is the present value and this is the future value and then you can substitute it into your equation for finding the price of the stock